What is up guys? We are back with another video and today is Ryzen 5000 series launch day. That means we get to tell you quite a lot about these processors, performance, benchmarks, gaming, all of that fun stuff. Now, before we get started on this processor, I also have a video on the Ryzen 5 5600X. I will have that link below where you guys can go ahead and check that out. But of course, this video is on the Ryzen 9 5900X. So let's go ahead and take a look. The Ryzen 9 5900X is effectively the replacement for the Ryzen 9 3900X or XT. It's still a 12 core, 24 thread part. It's gonna have a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and it's gonna boost up to 4.8 gigahertz. It has 64 megabytes of L3 cache and it keeps the same TDP of 105 watts. The Ryzen 5000 series is based on a seven nanometer process and we're still in the AM4 socket. So no, you know, you don't have to get a new motherboard if you don't need to. So what exactly is really new with the 5000 series? And that is the architecture. So on the Ryzen 3000 series, we were on Zen 2. With the 5000 series, we moved to Zen 3. And Zen 3 was kind of rebuilt from the ground up with three main goals in mind. So the first thing that AMD focused on was single core performance. They didn't wanna have a great IPC increase by spreading their workloads across a ton of cores. The next thing was latency. This meant that they unified cores and cache in a continuous eight core complex. This allows for better communication between the cores and lower memory latency by having more cache available. The last thing was efficiency. AMD didn't want to go all out in, you know, all out on performance and raise the TDPs of the processors. They wanted to do everything in an efficient way. Here we can see the major changes that AMD made with Zen 3 in terms of front end enhancements, execution, and load store. The 19% IPC uplift that you're going to see on these processors includes many different factors, including cache prefecting, the execution engine, branch predictor, micro op cache, front end and load store. As I mentioned, AMD is moving to an eight core complex. So here is how that looks compared to the previous Zen 2 four core complex. This new design accelerates core and cache communication and reduces memory latency. When it comes to efficiency, AMD didn't wanna go all out on performance. As I said, we've seen what happens when you do that in terms of power and temperatures. They wanted to be able to add in features that I've already mentioned without lowering the efficiency. So if we directly compare the 3900 XT to the 5900 X, we see about a 2.4 times increase in performance per watt. When it comes to overclocking, overclocking on the Ryzen 5000 series chips is pretty much the same as you saw on Ryzen 3000 series. So if you're, you know, if you're familiar with that, it's going to be pretty easy. You can overclock in your BIOS. You can use the Ryzen master software. If you're new to overclocking, I would probably recommend using the Ryzen master software as it's easier to use. For this processor specifically, we were able to get all 12 cores running at 4.6 gigahertz with a V-core of 1.35 volts. I think that's pretty good, uh, especially considering we're using an air cooler. So now on to testing. Here are the specs of both our AMD system as well as our Intel system. They're basically the same system. The only differences, of course, are the motherboards and the processors. Everything else is basically the same.
As we come to the end here, I actually find it kind of interesting that AMD is releasing these processors now. Um, it is right before holiday season, so it, com it completely makes sense, of course. But if you think about it, the Ryzen 3000 series processors, at least in my opinion, are still very competitive against Intel's, Intel's uh, 10th generation core processors. They just are, especially in multi-core. So what has AMD really done with the 5000 series? For me, of course, it's gaming performance. I think that if you look at the gaming performance of everything before this, or before the 5000 series, you saw that even like something like an 8700K would give you better performance than a top end 3000 series chip. Um, that is kind of how it went. Uh, and that's kind of what we said all the time is like, if you're strictly a gamer, you strictly care about the most FPS, it, you have to go Intel. Well, of course, AMD wanted to change that and they kind of have done that here with the 5000 series. You know, we directly compared this to the i9-10900K and in our gaming test, it traded blows kind of back and forth. So I don't think it's, a, again, it's gonna depend on title, but I don't think that it's like it was before where Intel would always beat it. I think depending on the title, AMD is gonna have an upper hand or Intel is gonna have an upper hand. I think that's great because I, it gives you a real choice if you are a pure gamer, that's all you care about. You kind of have a, more of a choice now. You know, another thing that's really impressive is that if we just take, you know, we had our same Ryzen system, same everything, same motherboard processor memory, everything, and we just slotted in a new 5000 series processor. Besides Borderlands, which if you look at the graph is a complete outlier, I think, um, because it didn't really matter what processor we put in there. But besides Borderlands, if we just went from a 3900 um, X to a 5900 X, we saw anywhere from an 8% to an 18% increase in gaming performance, which I think is pretty awesome. I think just by slotting in a new processor, just getting that performance, nothing has nothing to do with the GPU or anything like that. I think that is a really good thing. Of course, we have, you know, increased multi-core in single core performance. We saw up to a 22% increase from the 3900X to the 5900X in single core performance. So that is a massive jump in single core performance. Multi-core performance, it was kind of like the same thing. Like, eight to 18%, depending on the test, we saw uh, comparing those two as well. So a lot of performance kind of packed into this and at the same TDP, which I really like. Um, that is kind of like the performance thing. As I said, overclocking was really easy. I felt like you were able to push these chips just a little bit further, at least on our setup than we were with the 3000 series chips, but it's all the same. You can do it in the BIOS or with the Ryzen um, master software. Um, and then it comes down to platform and I think you have to, you still have to talk about platform just for the fact that we still don't have PCI Express 4.0 on Intel systems. Um, their 11th gen processors will launch hopefully in Q1 and bring that. But as of right now, if you're building a new system, you do not have that. So that, again, that's something to think about. You're gonna get that on a B550 or an X570 motherboard. So again, keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that AMD has done a really good job. Oh, the one thing that I'm not a fan of, um, I know a lot of you guys won't agree with this, but I did like the, the Wraith Prism pro or the Wraith Prism CPU cooler, um, for people who, you know, they're putting their savings or, you know, their whole paycheck into a new PC build that Wraith Prism saves you 50 bucks, right? Um, it just does, it just makes it easier uh, to build because you don't have to think about that extra 50 bucks. You can put that towards something else. I did like that, you know, Intel, they, they stopped giving us uh, CPU coolers, which theirs were pretty horrible um, on their processors. And AMD did give you CPU coolers, which at least the Wraith Prism was a good, at least in my opinion, a good CPU cooler. So to not have it on these processors, at least everything from the uh, above the Ryzen 5 series, it is kind of a bummer. But beyond that, I think this is a great processor. It's a great upgrade. I don't think that if you have a 3000 series, you should upgrade. But if you're on a 2000 or you know original Ryzen system, it is going to be a great upgrade, especially in terms of gaming performance. Now, um, pretty much across the board, AMD is 
putting a $50 premium on these. So the 3900X launched at $499. This is $549. I think it's worth it for the performance that you're getting. So if you guys have any questions about this processor, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and I will have links below to our full written review as well as where you can go ahead and pick this product up. So until next time, we'll catch you guys later.